Hi, everyone. Welcome to this deep dive with Cave Day featuring Christina Garrett. Uh, Christina is our guest for this, this month, August 2022. Um, and she is a lot of things. She is a productivity coach, a women's wellness advocate. She's a mom of five. And if you can believe it or not, she homeschools all five. Um, she's a wife and probably does a million other things that are not on her website or she didn't tell me. Um, but uh, welcome, Christina. Thank you, Jake. It's so good to be here. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, Christina, can you give us sort of the one minute story of how you got to do the kind of work you're doing? Um, I think a lot of people say that their work chose them, um, but I'm going to adopt that cliche for today. Um, I am a mom of five, but um, if you can rewind back to about a decade ago, I was a mom with three children age two and under um, when I had an 18 month old and then a surprise set of twins right after. And so as a family, we really had to learn how to uh, practice healthier self care, um, press pause when needed. Um, take those quiet moments and find ways to interject more of those quiet moments in order to still deliver in the same way in our family. So um, I've been honored to do that for the last 10 years now to support ambitious women with getting more done by strategically doing less. I want to get back. That, that's such an interesting phrase and you've, you've got it mastered <laughs> and memorized. Uh, we're going to come back to that. I want to yes. start um, this session, this deep dive. And, and for those of you joining and, and um, even in the recording, we're going to do a 45 minute conversation with Christina and then 45 minute sprint. Uh, so hopefully you'll, uh, you've got something to work on. So uh, to set this up, I want to do a, just a quick, like warm up icebreaker, like quick mm -hmm. 20 questions. The cave guides in the room will know many of these questions. We do this uh, every month with a new cave guide to get to know them a little bit better. But in, in about three words or less, we're going to do quick 20 questions. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Number one, what's your zodiac sign and do you care? Aquarius and no. What time of day do you wake up? Six. What's your coffee order? Oh, cream with a little coffee. <laughs> <laughs> what's your go-to pastry? Blueberry muffin. What's the app you use most on your phone? Calendly. The website you visit the most? Facebook. <laughs> if we had a talent show right now, what would be your talent? Singing. What's your favorite animated movie? Aladdin. Um, your last flight, when was it and where to? Dallas, Texas for a speaking engagement. What was your first paying job? A veterinary assistant at an animal hospital. Wow, cool. Uh, what was your worst job by your definition? Oh, working uh, in financial aid at the university <laughs> at school. That'll work. Uh, what's your most used emoji? Laughter. Um, are you more likely to treat yourself after a big win or a bad day? And how do you bad treat day. bad, bad day. day? And how? What's your treat? Leaving my house to go somewhere quiet. It's a good treat. Uh, what's a non-work thing that you put in your calendar every day or every week? Walking my dog or going for a run. What distracts you the most? My children. <laughs> no surprise there. Uh, what's a hobby that you love doing but you'd never wanna get paid for? Oh, never wanna get paid for. Um, encouraging other people to work out <laughs> and to be fit, like to run and stuff. I do love that. Sure. Uh, what are you reading now? And is it Kindle, paper, or audio? Uh, absolutely paper, the burnout fix. I cannot remember the author. OK. Well, someone will look it up, I'm sure. Sure they will. Uh, what's one thing you've started doing recently that you wish you had started earlier? Homeschooling my kids on a schedule. Mm. Uh, what's a trend you have no desire to get into? Oh, trend I have no desire. M making reels constantly. Yeah. <laughs> TikTok would have been mine. So yeah. uh, and 20, uh, last question. What's a phase? Sorry, not a phase. What is a phrase that you want your kids to remember you for saying? My mom always said. My mom always 
always said, never settle, always select. All right. Wisdom from Christina Garrett. All right. Thanks. So feeling warmed up, everyone feeling like they know you a little bit better. Uh, so I want to go back to that phrase. You said you help busy moms get more done by strategically doing less. Yes. Okay. So I, I'm not sure I'm on board yet because okay. like there is obviously a, a culture in our world yes. of, of more, like I, yeah. I, I need to make more. I need, I, I, I don't have enough time. I don't have, I didn't do enough today. I need to continue to do more. So what, why are you promoting this idea of strategically doing less? And I also, I'm, I'm playing a little bit dumb, but I want to, yes. I yes. know. you know, across the board, and I see a lot of ladies watching across the board. Um, I have found that we, as women, we like to take on things that, um, we could delegate. Okay. Um, maybe you have, I'm a believer in my house that if your children can swipe up, they can clean up. Okay, that means if your child, even your toddler can come in and hack your phone, which we know they know how to do these new age children, you know, they can come in and, and get into your phone. That means that you can hold a bag and walk around and pick up that tissue that you probably put there. You can put it back. Okay, some things I have found we as parents, but especially we as women, we micromanage a lot, you know, and we hover over in places where, you know, dad can step in, right? Our co-parent, our partner can step in to support us in the dynamic and we don't have to do everything. And so when I say get more done, I mean, in those strategic places and the things that only you can do, okay? When we have our sprint time this afternoon, you're going to be working on things that are assigned to you, but it is my hope that we all have a list of things that someone else can do. You know, I have a cleaning lady. She may only come once a month to do my oven and make my floor sparkle, but she does it way better than I do because she comes in with a sprint. She doesn't get distracted. She doesn't have anything else on her list other than this particular project. And while she's doing that, I can be homeschooling my children, something only I do. I can be working on my business, something only I can do in certain aspects, but there are so many other things on the list that we can delegate. So at the end of the day, when you look at what's really important, you can say, okay, I got more done, but I didn't add more to the list. Hmm. I'm actually more okay. strategically on point, you know, so, what can I take off so that someone else can do it? I, I like, I, I like that. I can, I can get on board with that. So there's, what I'm hearing is there's a lot of bit that there's a lot of delegation. Yeah. And and there's a there's a bit that you're like sort of skipping over, which th it, it requires a little bit of management and teaching. Like very not, much, not micromanage. You have to teach someone. Yes. I, I have to say, in in my house, there's a certain way that the dishes need to be washed and put in the dishwasher, and there's a certain way that the <laughs> toys need to be away. You can't just yeah. put it back in the bin. There's an order. And so okay, so can I? I want to interject very yeah. much. So so in, when I teach productivity, it's from a four pillar standpoint. Okay. Teaches. Delegating is number three. Okay. So first you have to create a family vision. Okay. This is the big picture of your family. How do you want to be remembered one day when you uh, evaporate, like on the Avengers, you know, when you just go off to the next place, how do you want to be remembered one day? What do you want your kids to say about you when you're, when they're adults? OK, when they grow up and they start a family of their own or the people that you're connected to or mentor, when they talk about you or imitate who you are, the things that you've done, will you feel honored or will you feel embarrassed if, the, if your kids parent like you parent, right? So there are things that we need to intertwine in our daily lives now. Creating the vision means looking at the big, at the big picture. What's important to the grand scheme of my life, okay? Mm -hmm. So after you know what you want your family to look like and feel like, your business, your lifestyle, then we begin to communicate our needs to our loved ones, okay? I'm a listener and I, I am also communicating in a healthy way that they can respond to, okay? So if you are looking at the big picture and now I can tell my children, listen, when you guys don't honor the things that I do, this is how it makes me feel. 
when I continue to have to say over and over again that this was needs to happen at home, you know, this is how I need you all to understand. Communication can be written. Here are all the directions on the whiteboard, mm -hmm. right? It can be, that's communication. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we're telling our loved ones what our needs are and in turn hearing theirs too. Now, after you've created a vision and after you've communicated what the entire family needs, now we can delegate. But a lot of times we just pick up delegating and we want to make that number one. No, 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 no. Because we have done an entire five years, 10 years, sometimes 20 years of not having boundaries micromanaging, saying yes when we don't want to, being the savior of the family, all of these things, it takes time to drop that off, okay? Yeah. So now that we're creating a vision and we've communicated now, we can say, hey, babe, wouldn't you rather go and uh, go for a walk alone or go get your a manicure and I'll make sure the dishes are done? They might not be the way that you just are addicted to having them done, but I would much rather have nice nails and got my hair done or whatever than to stay at home and worry about what the kitchen looks like. Yeah. You know, but that comes after communicating. And I yeah. think sometimes, you know, we might have to say as a partner or a spouse or a parent, hey, I I'm not going to do it exactly like you do it. But if you want it done and you want to be able to leave this alone, this is what it's going to look like. <laughs> I, th I think that's that's helpful. And I think you're if I if I can challenge you a little bit like yes. it, it's coming. I, I like the the pillars. I'm curious what the fourth one is. In, yes. In, in it. Um, <laughs> It's coming from an ideal, idealized place, right? Like yes. this, is, this is best best case scenario. I create a vision, I communicate my needs, and then I can just delegate that. I communicate, mm -hmm. and listen, and but I'm I'm sure you work with clients where the needs of your your client and their partner are mm -hmm. often in conflict. That yeah. what I need doesn't quite work with my family, or what my family needs is messing up my work schedule or my you know, my person, you know, I, I need X number of hours of sleep and mm -hmm. this is not, this doesn't fit in. So um, as a broad generalization, yes. how do you, how do you deal with, you know, getting stuff done when my needs conflict with my partners? I will go back to pillar number two, communicating. Okay. And I say that my husband is an entre brick and mortar entrepreneur, right? With employees. He's a pastor. Sometimes he has to come and go and do things and people pop up sick and the things that ministers do, right? In conjunction with that, we have all the children plus homeschooling, plus my business and all these things. We have had to be very intentional about hearing each other and taking it from a broad spectrum versus um, you just don't wanna be bothered with me, right? Um, I will absolutely restate the pillars for everybody. Um, and so when it comes to a healthier sense of communication, I think that we have to ask ourselves what's most important. You know, from on the day-to-day -day spectrum, that can be very challenging because we're kind of bumping into each other or moving like ships in the night or all of these, you know, interesting factors. And then simultaneously, there's also the blanketed thing. Have we reached the goal as a unit for the week? What's the most important thing? And so when I think about delegating, when I assess things that only I can do, only I can be, unless you're in different kinds of relationships, right? I'm the only one that can be a great wife to my husband, right? In all the ways that wives are great to husbands. I'm the only one that can do that. My kids are looking to me for certain types of um, affirmation and love and encouragement, things of that nature, okay? But just this year, as my oldest son is going into high school and letters and numbers are coming together in a mathematic equation, mom had to bow out gracefully, Okay, I had to bow our grace. I said, algebra is not my jam. Somebody else has to do this. And so we went and found a program that teaches homeschool teenagers algebra and English grammar and all these things. That's delegating. Is it still matching up to the family vision? Yes. So we're looking at the big picture, okay? And I think sometimes we fall in line with laundry and dishes and all these small things that we forget about the big scheme of things. Have we sat down and talked about, is there a way that I can encourage you better or love you better? If you think about your job, for example, if there were three things that I could do this week to make sure I help the company hit its goal, 
If I was thinking about those three things, what if we went to our partner, our spouse, significant other, family members who rely on us and say, hey, I only have two days this week to help you do X. Or I only, you know, listen, throughout this week, if there were three things that I could do that would really encourage you or help you to feel seen this week, what would those things be? Yeah. Then we wouldn't be fussing about all this extra stuff. You know what I mean? We would do the things that really meant the most. Yeah. What, what you're bringing up for me is, is something I actually just wrote about a couple of weeks ago, which was this idea that like, y- you can't be everything to everyone. You, you yeah. actually, what you're implying is like, your four pillars require a focus on family or partnership and not like, I got 50 friends and I got to, yeah. you know, give time to all my, it, you're laughing, but I, I like, I remember it in my life where it was like, you know, I, I could call my high school friends or my college friends or my neighbors or like there were 20, 30 at least people that it was like, I have these like very loose ties. But um, if you're talking about like doing strategically less, it's about having more trustworthy and trusting um, relationships and ties yeah. in our life. Yeah, yeah. Everybody is not, and this sounds bad, if we think about the full course of our life, you know, at the end of everything, everyone is not coming to celebrate your life, right? So sometimes we spend our energy, <laughs> you know, that's true. You know, the projects, the proposals, all this extra stuff that we're working on and putting our energy into. At the end of the day, you know, we we have to make sure that our relationships, the people that we say are the most important, actually feel that. And so for my husband, you know, he appreciates a tidied up house, but his wife doesn't have to be the one that does the tidying up, you know? So if I pay the cleaning lady to come in and just do the kitchen, because it's the scariest place in the house and the bathrooms, because we have four boys and y'all already know, you know, if that's, if that's the only thing she comes to do, that makes the biggest difference. And I can focus on the other stuff, you know, the things that really matter, spending time, laughter, you're not as mad. You know, when things are all over the place, you're angry and frustrated. And so what we want to do instead is transform that by doing the things for the people in our lives that really matter, doing those priorities first. Yeah. What's what's kind of interesting now is I'm I'm rethinking the way that you work, which is like I came in thinking not to this conversation, but to getting to know you as like, oh, you're a productivity coach. This fits perfectly into cave day. And we'll talk about focus and managing distractions and monotasking and, and all the things that we talk about. And, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm shifted. It's sort of like, I, and now I'm reading your shirt and it says mom coach. It's like, you're helping people sort of take off, learn. I don't know. How do you get less done as a mom? It's not about work necessarily, but it is about work, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, it's about I, everything. It's about everything. And I have seen over the course of time, you know, one of my clients, she's a financial planner and she reached out. She said, you know, everything in my life feels chaotic, but I think it's my fault. I think it's me. And I said, okay, well, we should talk about this, you know? And she had a whole moment because the people, the, the aunt that raised her was almost OCD about perfection in the home, like tidying up men, breaking out the bleach and everything. Okay. Right. Like some of us have a, a conception of what togetherness looks like. And so she said, I realized my family and four children just could not understand why I was being so unreasonable, but I didn't know how to take that off and say, okay, everyone can do their part. When I asked them to do their part, they never finish it. And I said, well, are you a finisher? Are you someone that takes a task and completes it? Or is that something that you have trouble with? And she said, okay, I get it. You know, the more that we enact this beauty in our own lives and ourselves, now we can expect the people around us to do the same thing. And so I saw a question in the chat, if I'm allowed, or do we do that later? Okay. No, no, I, th- um, I was going to jump to there too. I think it's a great yeah, question. Yeah. Someone asked about delegating on a budget, right? My, my thought is, first off, do you have kids at home? And I hope that whoever's still watching, no kids. Okay, so I would think about, is this in terms of business? Is this, in, like, what do you want to get rid of? Cleaning. <laughs> What's the scariest place in your house? Shh. 
kitchen and bath. Mine I too. think like oh everyone. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's kitchen and bath. The first time that my cleaning lady came, she got down on her hands and knees and scrubbed my kitchen floor. And I could have cried. I don't think it had ever smelled that good since the day we moved in, you know? Um, my thought pattern would be this. I don't need it all the time, okay? She can come once a month and really get to those spots. She goes into the ovens and, you know, the oven and the microwave and all these places that I may not have time to cover throughout the course of the month, okay? But especially if it's, you know, you just you there or, you know, you don't have any boys coming into the bathroom to create art <laughs> with their, um, <laughs> then you, you know, it may stay that way a little longer. And so someone says, my teenage daughter offered to clean top to bottom kitchen for $15 this week, right? If my cleaning lady, we have a nice size place, but she does my kitchen and my bathroom for a little over a hundred dollars, you know, for me once a month, it's worth it. So the bigger question is how can I make a hundred extra dollars this month? Or, and you're saying maybe it's, it's earn it and maybe it's, it's, it's worth it. It's worth the investment. Yeah. Uh, but what I'm saying is, it, it, you know, how do you make more money, not everyone is in control of taking on more clients, but what you're yes. also suggesting is moving money around, making a sacrifice here. I'm not going to spend here yes. in order to make sure that the, the emotional benefit of the cleaning lady or the, the house cleaners um, are, are worth it. Yes, because we eat out a lot as a family. If you're stopping at the drive through anywhere, <laughs> you got to ask yourself, hey, maybe I'll reallocate some right. of my Chinese food dinner money to the true joy of not being the person to scrub the tub. Yeah. Um, I wanna move on to a little bit about your your life and how you plan. I'm, I'm so curious about living and having five kids in the house. Um, I'm curious how you plan your time. Like mm -hmm. you do sort of a, a weekly, here's what's coming up. Do you do it every day? Do you have like a monthly goal and an annual vision? And how do you break down the time to plan? To be totally honest, I have not yet figured out how to plan for the entire year. I, I just haven't. I know every year our mom community, women's community, we have a annual conference every year. It's in October. So now I'm kind of tumbling towards that and making all those time investments and planning. Um, but usually once a week, I look at what's on the schedule, what's coming up. Um, and then every morning, of course, as well. I have an open Calendly that, you know, of course has my uh, availability there. So sometimes someone sneaks in, you know, you go to bed and then they book a call during the night because you have been reminding them. And oh, wait a second, it's for the day of or the next day. So I try to be on top of all of that. Um, this year, my children are in more programs, more homeschooling programs, and they have have been in the years past. So we've been feeling that stretch. Yeah. One thing that I promised myself was that I was going to be really intentional with educating them this year. You know, we always have been, they've always been learners, excellent public speakers and little micro entrepreneurs, but um, to make sure that they have the things they need as they're going into high school and preparing for college, because kids go to college evidently. Um, and so that has been a primary point of my mornings lately, more homeschooling in the morning. In the afternoon, I switch gears to coach woman. Um, and then it turns out my community stays up late because I think they have that revenge insomnia thing going on where the house is finally quiet. So that's the time that they want to watch Facebook lives and, you know, chit chat about what's overwhelming them, how they need to refocus and restructure. So usually that's how the day goes, homeschooling, coaching in the afternoon or moments just like this. Yeah. Um, and then uh, dinner time, shuttling children to bed and hopefully a yeah. Facebook live if I haven't blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I hear you on um, on the planning for the year. I think 2020 messed a lot of us up in that way, yeah. in yeah. a lot of ways, but also this idea of like, how many of you had 2020 goals that were like, I'm going to do, you know, do this and grow my business and travel all these places. And, yeah. you know, suddenly it's like, oh, well, I'm not in control of anything. Like, I, and that was the a, a reality that hit me. It was like, I I have these goals, but they're sort of arbitrary and I'm not in control of a lot of them. And mm -hmm. so for me, it was a shift from like planning goals and, and thinking about what do I want to get done this year to more like, 
what, what's, what are the habits that I can build a little bit every day that I'm in control of or a little every week? Um, that, that was, it, it's just easier to plan and to grasp for me and for a lot of the people in our community. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm curious as a transition, how, how has the pandemic shifted your work? Like what were you doing three years ago? So I was always coaching um, where I guess maybe the last five years, you know, podcasting and summits and conferences and things like that. Um, it has definitely heightened and picked up the work um, because <laughs> I think once the pandemic hit and all the kids are out of school, something kicked off in folks mind. I was like, wait, there's a lady who always has her kids with her and is always talking about learning how to breathe when your children are around, you know? And so my, my you know, messenger started going ding, ding, ding. And, um, you know, things just kind of picked up a lot over that time. Um, since then, I think the self-care, wellness, mental health, learning to take breaks intentionally has really, uh, really grown a lot. Self-care is no longer like a, a I guess a taboo thing or something we didn't hear about all the time. Now it's always uh, on social media and wellness and creating a journey and a life that serves that. Um, and we've always, you know, been, been very passionate about that for the last 10 years. And so I've been doing more uh, educational workshops, organizational workshops, mm -hmm. um, talking about pressing pause and taking the day off and uh, doing planning your life around that. So it's been universities and coaching staffs and just great. Mostly remotely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, of course. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> sure. Um, I, 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 um, I'm curious, like we're still waiting on the fourth pillar. Oh and I'm, yeah, I'm you guessing, had a movie. I'm okay. guessing it's, it's gotta be tied to, to this, right? To yes, it is. And breaks and Tell, tell yes. us what it is. Okay, so create the vision, create right. your family vision for you, the people that are connected to you, communicate your needs, delegate unnecessary tasks, and then alleviate your stress and your overwhelm through healthy self-care and self-awareness. So if you have, you know what life you're working towards, you share with the people around you, right? Create, communicate, delegate, right? Now I know what to give away because it doesn't matter. And because I'm no longer doing everything, I alleviate my stress automatically. You know, if somebody's coming to clean your house and yeah. massage you and stuff, it's a good life. So, so let's talk about intentional breaks. Cause I think a lot of people, when, when cave day, when we talk about breaks, I think a lot, a lot of people in our community get it. And when we talk about it in, in a corporate environment, we're coming to work with a team or maybe even a new um, a new member comes to cave day and they're like, okay, we're, I'm going to work for three hours. And then we're like, okay, actually stop. We're going to stand up and we're going to stretch our body. Take a deep breath. We're going to do four mm -hmm. deep breaths or we're, we're going to go into a breakout room and have a weird conversation about your favorite breakfast cereal. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of people like, wait a second, I, what? Like, this is not right. Or, or I, I know that my, my wife loves TikTok and, you know, her taking a break is scrolling and, um, I keep telling her like, that is not a restorative break. That is not mm -hmm. helping you to relax. There's like a, a, a different kind of energy. So, so one way that I just heard about it last week that I'll share, and then I'm curious how you frame breaks mm -hmm. is if, if we were going to do a hundred pushups today, mm -hmm. to do it all at once, you're going to tire out. You're never going to make it to a hundred, but mm -hmm. if you, if you did 10 and then took a break and then 10 and then took a break and you know, you, you, you did that several times, like the breaks actually help you go longer. The breaks actually allow you to sustain the work that you're doing, mm -hmm. um, which I found to be a really simple analogy. I'm curious mm -hmm. how you talk about intentional breaks and this idea of alleviate your overwhelm. My thought behind intentional breaks is to make them non-negotiable. Tell me more. There is a place where I call them stolen moments sometimes where I can see my running shoes across my office area right now. And they're calling me for tonight at sunset. And this is not a conversation to be had. This is not, um, okay, maybe it's gonna happen. Someone else can figure out dinner because no one can run for me. And nobody really likes me that much when I don't go run. Okay, I'm just not that person. <laughs> 
Rossi Ruth, you know, yeah. nobody really likes me all that much when I don't breathe and I don't, you know, something about the sunset and God's blue sky and the air, it makes me a better person, a better human, you know, yeah. to be around. And so I found that sometimes though, we, we make it up for negotiation where if someone else presents something as an alternate, you almost feel like you can't defend that space in a, in a passionate way, yeah. you know? Self-care is something that other people benefit from, but ultimately it's for you. And I think people sometimes have a problem with that. You know, they have the, the saying self-care isn't selfish. I say self-care is selfish and that's okay. Mm. There's nothing wrong with one part of your life, right? Like this one bubble of time, if it's 30 minutes, if it's an hour, where the other 15 hours of the day, I'm serving other people, 10 hours, however, I'm serving other people and they're benefiting from my brain and my love and my energy. But this one hour, this one is mine. Yeah. And, and it's not so intentional breaks me that I get to be selfish with this little moment. You know, whether it's 10 minutes or it's an hour, I like to leave and like run for the 30 or 40 minutes, then come back and get my dog and do like two or three more miles. Yeah. I'm gone for a while. You know, and it feels so good for me. It's intentional, though. Yeah. So uh, it, it's hard to see that because we don't or you don't or we don't really celebrate that or talk about it or feel even if it feel even if you've gotten comfortable with the idea that it is selfish and that's mm -hmm. OK, it's hard to promote it. And so, like, when I look at you and I see, oh, you're doing an Instagram live later and a LinkedIn live and you're you're coaching all these people and you've got five kids that you're homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Literally, one of my questions was like, do you ever take a break? Do you ever rest? And obviously you do, but I, I don't even know the question here. Like, it's it's like, should we be just assuming that everyone does? Should we be talking about this more? How do we make sure that it's like a part of like going for a 30 minute run? Mm -hmm. It's not going to prevent you from doing all the amazing things that you're doing, any of us that are doing. Mm -hmm. um, but but I don't know. I feel, I still feel the resistance. Oh, Christina's doing There's so much. No way she would take a break. So, <laughs> and you know, there are moms, they, how, how are you doing all of the things? Like last night I had a, um, a teaching in a mom, moms in business group. Right. But while I was back there doing that for that hour, um, my daughter who's 12 was cooking dinner and she was making tikka masala for dinner, put the chicken in it, cook the chicken, put it in the oven, made the rice. By the time I came out, I said, I guess we just need to figure out a green vegetable. You know, yeah. like that was, that is delegating, right? And it also gave me space for doing something that only I can do. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you know, did I, I don't think I ran yesterday, but it was on purpose. I intentionally didn't go. Um, but I think there, the disconnect often happens because we're looking for ways to jump in the self-care and all these bubbles, but we haven't had the conversations yet. And we yeah. haven't looked at the list of the things that I can, only I can do versus what can I give away to someone else? That if it was a faceless task, right? That might be with a virtual assistant. Like while Jake was gone, I was emailing with Molly, right? Mm -hmm. And you were off, you know, living your best life. Yeah. You know, it's- But, but what, so, so what, what Christina's yeah. talking about is that I was, I was off last week. I was on vacation. I didn't yeah. check my emails. It was great. Um, and, and, you know, that happens like once a year, but I can't just sort of get to burnout and then disappear for a week. Yeah. Um, like, I think this is Amanda's question here. It's like, how, how often do you build in these breaks and do you schedule them in? And w w I'm curious about you. I, I'll say that we, we, in one of the workshops that Cave Day runs, we talk about um, sort of creating your menu. Mm -hmm. It's essentially like, what can you do once an hour for about mm -hmm. a minute to eight minutes? Like, what can you do? Every hour, I'm just going to stand up and walk around or stretch. Um, what can you do once a day? Which is, I'm going to go exercise. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to play the piano or something. And then what? what's something you can do once a week? Like a weekly ritual on the weekends. I sleep in. I have a special coffee. I have, um, you know, a long run or something. Like that's And so building that menu, like having two or three things from each category, and then just having that in front of you and say, I need a break. What am I going to do? Great. Or I'm going to put it right in my schedule um, that, that that would help. But I'm curious how you do it or how you talk to your clients about like building in the intentional breaks. So I look, 
I often don't look to take a break in an app for every hour, right? I look at it as if I can make it to 5.30 or six o'clock in the evening. And, and the other more important things, not more important, the other things on the list have been done, okay? So as I met with the clients in the afternoon, my children learned something today, right? The homework has been to the special programs have been turned in and things like that. So at six o'clock, in a way, I'm kind of off the clock. You know what I mean? In a way, it's like, all right, you know, this is my bubble. That's scheduled. Can I, can I actually just stop, yes, stop you there? Because yes. that's, that's where a lot of people get tri tripped up. It's this idea yeah. of enough. You've done enough. Yeah. And I think a lot of us feel like I haven't done enough. I, I've but I don't been, get a break. I, right, exactly. I haven't earned yeah. it. I've been doing shallow work or having meetings all day and it's six o'clock and I didn't get any real work done. Mm -hmm. So I got to keep going. So yes. I think that that's a really important distinction and that we can all define that for ourselves and I would ask whatever this real work is can we bring it to our mind earlier you know because there we may be doing the the frivolous things or the things that aren't the most urgent they're just on the list somewhere what's mm -hmm. time sensitive what is you know someone waiting on this from me you know things of that nature can we bring the real work whatever that is for you to the forefront so that by the time you hit that that moment where you need a break you're like okay i have actually accomplished you know the the most important things that were on the list to do because everything that's on my list isn't time sensitive you know or isn't the most urgent yeah i mean that takes practice but it, 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 that's helpful um yeah i i think uh i'm gonna call out two things that are in the chat here that Anne said about teaching your kids self-care that they learn to watch what you do that you're taking time for yourself yeah. um and the eisenhower matrix which is this mm -hmm. idea of important versus urgent work and, and being able to define that for yourself i have i have four sons and so i really want them to see that women rest you know like in this current society and all the things where we as Women, sometimes we feel like we have to do all the things and it may be a struggle for us to delegate or, and don't laugh. One day my son had to have something signed by a parent, right? My husband was driving him to the program and he had to have something signed off. My mind started racing, Jake. How am I going to, you know, fix, move this around so I can go up there and sign for my son? And I called my husband, I called my husband on the phone. And I said, wait a second. You're a parent too. You can sign it. When I but when I say my mind did not register that at first. Like my yeah. first thought was, how do I go and do it? And my husband said, Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm an adult. I'm, I'm a guardian. I can sign off. And so I think sometimes there our innate our initial mindset is, how can I go to do this instead of who else can do it? And I can be, you know, operating as the best version of myself in a different place strategically doing less doing less i did not yeah. have to go to that program and sign anything my husband was in the car why did this not dawn on me yeah that's it's great sad. yeah uh, it's it's great and it's also terrible that like that's <laughs> the default um uh, we've got a, a couple more minutes left i want to make sure i get to a couple questions here at the end um what do you think is a common mistake that people are making either at work or in their parenting or Sort of that that balance what do you see a lot i think that we have reasonable expectations but unreasonable communication i choose to believe that our families actually do want what's best for us i believe that our if you're a parent my children actually want to see the laughing joyful fun mom and not like psycho Shrek mom, you know who we turn into when we haven't had enough sleep and we're mad and you walk into the room that you just cleaned and everything has been turned over. That that woman, we no one really likes living with her, you know? And so I have found that as a person, the people in my life really do wanna see me as my best self. But sometimes I don't know how to tell them that this is what I need, you know? So when I was pregnant um, of the many times, one phrase that I would tell my husband is, I need a quarantine moment. Or I need a quarantine day, you know? It's just, man, everyone in this world is annoying me right now. And I just really don't want anyone to talk to me. That was how I phrased it. 
Yeah. And I just need time by myself with no one with no one talking to me. So I think that there's a, to be honest, that I've been there. You know, I have had to learn how to communicate to him. I'm not sure what's wrong with me today, but I just don't feel like, like myself. Um, I just need your support. You know, could you make sure that this happens? Because Jake probably has the dad voice too, where you guys have a different power than mom some days. And you said, didn't your mom say, go get in the tub? And then they go get in the tub because, you know, we, we try to be nice with it sometimes. And so, you know, I have found that me communicating that though, you yeah. know, we may have expectations that we're not correctly uh, depicting to the people that love us and yeah. really do want what's best for us. Yeah, I think that's so huge. And and like, uh, in my experience, like a lot easier said than done that like, it takes a lot of work it, it, that to communicate that you need that to feel like that request will be seen and, and supported by your partner and not feel like there's resentment, like, well, I don't get time, why should I give you, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there, there can be a lot of that. Um, and, and I think you're right, like, everyone wants your best self all the time. And um, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm sort of like already sold on these four pillars because it's like, yeah, like getting, getting on board with like this vision. We all want to be our best selves. We should all show up supporting each other and and all that, and then being able to. What does that look like? Yeah, you know, what um, does that look like? And and I'll say based on what you just said, you know, there are moments where we as women we just need time off, but our our counterparts do too, right? Our men do too, our, our co-parents or people in relationships with they need time off as well. But that's where it comes to that communication. Well, I don't get time off. You know what? You're right. You should. Hmm. You should get time off. So maybe if I go this Saturday night, next Saturday night, you can go and see a movie or get lunch with a friend or something like that. But I feel like we need to honor having space, you know, having space and time to breathe and not making the people that we love feel bad for that. You know, that is a normal, healthy human trait to just sit and feel God's sun on your face and say, okay, where, where am I going in this life? But you need quiet to figure that out and extra clarity to figure that out. Yeah. Um, one last question and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll jump into our work. Um, I've been kicking around this idea uh, that we are like this new generation of parents. There's this, mm -hmm. this, this new pioneer of parent, which is, is kind of related to like the women's movement and equality. Mm -hmm. Um, and also like an awareness of emotion and emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. which is which is that um, I, I don't know how to how to exactly put it, except that like um, there's a lot of emotional talk in in yeah. our relationship and a lot of my friends yeah. and and which is that like when I think about my parents and definitely my grandparents, like they did not <laughs> we're not talking about like I feel yeah. resentful, I feel hurtful, I'm doing more than you, and like. The, mm -hmm. There was not that, and I think that parents right now in in today's world feel like um, it's just a lot harder because we we are aware of our emotions. We want to share that. There's a, a a want or a need for equality, and and I want to take on more. But there's this. I, I don't know. There's a lot there. I'm I'm curious. Does that resonate? Does that feel like something that you feel in your relationship or see with your clients? Um, I definitely see it with my clients. Um, and when we were raising smaller children, we really, really felt it. And so when Jake shared, okay, I have these little ones, it's like, oh, you know, we're kind of in the trenches right now. And it makes so much sense. And then children grow. So my oldest son is 14. He's like five, nine, and his voice is deep. And he sounds deeper than my husband's, right? Like, I'm, you're like a whole man, okay? And so one thing that I want us to embrace is that there are seasons to this. Okay, there are seasons of life that we are sometimes when we're in the moment, it feels like this season is going to be forever. This is my life sentence. Okay, but in reality, those those days do pass and then you look up and you're dropping somebody off at college. Um, that being said, I do agree that we have a lot more emotional awareness than we used to. I don't know. I believe it's serving us well, but I don't think the boundaries of it always does. You know, my, my husband's mom, he's one of six children. She had an all white living room. Okay. All white living room. And she's not, she's five to a hundred pounds when wet. 
And people would come to her house and they would say, oh, Mrs. Garrett, how in the world do you have six children and this all white living room? Like they don't destroy your living room. And as small and tiny as she is, she would say, oh, they better not go in there. Like it was just known. I don't care how small you are. I don't care how big the boys are. Do not go in this space. And I think that it falls into the self-care and self-awareness as well, because we no longer feel like it's okay for me to protect my boundaries, that this is my room. This is my space. I don't want your stuff in here. Right. And I don't care if you feel sad about it. It's my, it's my area. This is mine. And I don't want anyone else to use it. And so one thing that we've done in our family is to vigorously protect boundaries, you know, for my husband and myself, because kids ultimately pay no bills. <laughs> and we care, we love them, they're special, they're unique, and all the wonderful things, but kids don't pay bills. They, so I'm now adapting my desires for us as the king and the queen of the house, right? We're allowed to have whatever we want because we pay for it. Yeah. You know, and, and Tina says, teachers, thank you for teaching boundaries in your home, because when they come to school, they're going to ha have to learn boundaries there. Nowhere else in the world can you walk in on people when they're taking a shower and not go to prison. So why can't I teach this at home now as a mom? Yeah. I, you no know, boundaries. I think it, it all comes down to boundary, personal boundaries, teaching boundaries, all, all that stuff. I think it's it's awesome. Um, and, and another sort of side takeaway, you mentioned I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old and the, the idea of them cooking dinner and, you know, <laughs> taking care of each other and not yeah. having, our one-year-old just started to walk and we have to chase him everywhere because he's like, loves the stairs and loves the toilet and loves, so um, thank you for reminding me that it's a season and it will, um, thank you uh, for taking time with us today. We're going to jump into some deep work, but before we do, can you share how we can find you? Well, I'll share that it, it, this month we're, we're going to launch a, a resource library on the Cave Day Forum, which will include coaches, and Christina will be on there where you can find her and uh, follow up with her. But Christina, tell us how uh, people can get a hold of you and find you and follow you. Absolutely. Well, I am on social media probably too often. Um, if you want to hear me rant and rave like I've done today, um, you can uh, find me at the Mamathon Diaries on both Facebook and Instagram. I'll put those here in the chat as we prepare to deep dive. Um, or you can hop over to my website and just shoot me an email. And let's connect um, and hear how I can better serve you, your community, or your family. Um, thanks, Christina. I'm going to put the chat uh, right? Ma no, I, I typed that in wrong. Why don't you type it in right? Um, well, thanks so much. Uh, hopefully you can all join us. We're going to do a, a one sprint deep dive cave right now. Um, I'm going to invite everyone to just update their Zoom name to include the task that they're going to work on just for accountability's sake. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you so much for watching the recording. Um, so 